what happens when the PRV opens 100%, meaning you don't have control of lift? The fact that you set a PRV to begin with tells me you're probably dealing with a York, but this is not specific to York. So and this is something I cover very heavily in the centrifugal course in the Chiller Tech Certification Program at chilleracademy.com. So if you're in that, I do have uh, some lessons in there where I talk about the staging uh, sequences and how a PRV and VSD will stage together. So in your particular case, I can assess that the you have a VSD on your particular chiller. The chiller at startup will get the motor speed to its minimum uh, uh, RPM, minimum speed. Then your PRVs will begin to open. And again, this is true across chillers. This is not just York, but I'm speaking in York terms since that's what we're dealing with here. So your PRV will begin to open. Under most circumstances, the motor will not ramp until the PRV has opened as far as it can go. Now for a YK, it wants to see that PRV hit that 100% mark. So, and I think it's the actual value is like 95 or 98% open via the position sensor, but it wants to see it hit that. And then once it's full open, it will begin to ramp the, um, the actual motor speed. And as it begins to ramp, a couple of things will happen. Either we make leaving water set point or we start to push our surge boundary. As we start to push up against the surge boundary, it will begin to close off that PRV as we continue trying to stage up. And we're, we're doing that to try to mitigate where we're at in terms of surge because of these chillers, what they will do is if we go into a surge state to help overcome the surge, we will increase the motor speed while closing the IGV, the inlet guide vein or the PRV pre-rotation vein. So we will close that vein off to help reduce some of the flow um, but we will increase speed to help us get more centrifugal force to overcome the high lift and the instability in the diffuser. We're getting real specific into just the, the fundamentals of centrifugal at that point. But that is what's happening. It's actually a good thing. When you have a, a machine that has a PRV and a VSD and that PRV is able to open to 100% and that motor is then able to just ramp and control, we have far better efficiency. The most efficient that compressor will be is a 100% IGV or PRV and allowing the motor speed to ramp up and down because if we can lower the motor current by lowering the speed, we save a lot more energy than we would have if all we were doing was doing a uh, uh, IGV control or PRV control, which is one reason why we went that direction uh, as an industry. So. VSD chillers, one of the reasons they're more efficient than constant speed is because instead of just using a inlet guide vane to control flow through the compressor, we can actually lower our amperage by lowering the physical speed. And at that point, when your PRV is in a full open state, instead of them actually trying to re, uh, reduce flow by putting a pre-swirl pre to it, it's actually operating as a straightener. I've, I've heard the term recently that's referred to as straightening, refrigerant straightening, because a fixed guide vein, like what a like what a lot of the magnetic bearings have in them nowadays, they've got a fixed vein in them instead of a variable. So a PRV is a variable vein. Uh, an IGV, these are variable. But they have, we also have fixed veins. And I can show you a picture of that. Uh, this would be a, a fixed vein design where here's your veins. So it's going to sit in the nose cone. As it pulls through, it's straightening the refrigerant. Okay, so it's, it's coming off of our suction elbow. And I will use this machine here behind me as an example. Coming off the suction elbow, we get these eddy current swirls. Okay. So as these swirls happen, these swirls can provide, it's not, the, it's not the kind of swirling we want. These are small little eddy currents that become inefficiencies as it comes into the impeller eye. So by having a guide vane there that's just straight, so it's just fixed open 100%, it is helping take out some of those eddy currents so that we get a nice, clean, smooth flow into the impeller. And that flow will give us maximum output efficiency that that impeller can do versus if it had these little just random swirls. See, a variable vein 
it's it's not creating just this random swirl pattern. It's creating a very specific and engineered pattern that we have full control over as these paddles are, are moving. But the suction elbow, then, and as it flows up that elbow, we don't have that same control. So by straightening and smoothing out the, those eddy currents into a nice smooth pattern, we help improve that efficiency. So that's essentially what your PRV is doing once you um, start to control based off of speed. Uh, and, and, and every every centrifugal that I can think of off the top of my head that is variable speed and IGV does this. The CVHs do this, or the CVs series by, by train, just the CV in general, or CVH, GED, whatever. <clears throat> they all, they, they will push that, uh, that inlet guide vein as open as they can. Now, in the events, in some of these circumstances, the IGVs may not open 100% every time. Why? Is because the machine is, has made a calculation to realize that it, if it opened that far, it would push beyond the surge line. So it knows that I can't continue opening my, my inlet guide veins at this speed. If I want to open these more, I need to speed up first. So in those circumstances where you don't see it go to 100% and the motor starts speeding up first, it's because in, inside the controls package, it registered that we're, we're up against the surge boundary and we need to start working these two, the, the, the guide vanes and the motor speed together in order to keep the compressor in a, in a safe condition so that we can ultimately make leaving water set point. In the event that you surged with that IGV, at 100%, your IGV is just going to start to close off. It will begin to close off so that you can uh, you can try to get that lift under. Or the, the, yeah, you can try to get the lift under control so that you don't continue to surge. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've I've committed. I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can. Uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given.